Hello everyone. So in this lecture I'm going to do the same circuit that we did last time that included an inductor but this time we're going to use a shortcut the same kind of shortcut that we use for the capacitors to kind of quickly give you values for the currents and voltages in the circuit uh, without doing much of a circuit and like going through the algorithm. So the, the approach is that since we know if you have an inductor and a bunch of resistors in a circuit or a capacitor a bunch of resistors in a circuit or a bunch of inductors you, that you can turn into an equivalent inductor uh, and a bunch of resistors the solution for all the voltages and currents in the circuit is going to be in this format if we know that which we know that um, then all you can well all, what you can do is to directly go to that solution and say okay to find out the currents and voltages in the circuit what do I need to know I need to know the final value for the voltage or current in the circuit the initial value for the voltage or current in the circuit and a time constant so for the final value or the initial value it's relatively simple to do because most of the time what you need to do is to just realize that the initial for the calculation of initial value or the final value uh, you assume that the voltages and currents are uh, stable and with that since the voltage uh, of an inductor is a derivative of a current that means that the voltage of the inductor turns into zero or since the current of a capacitor is the derivative of the voltage of the capacitor the current of a capacitor goes to zero therefore really you don't have to do much with the inductor or capacitor which is the component that creates complexity in the solution and it goes back to a simple resistive circuit which you hopefully can quickly solve and therefore that part is taken care of and now the only thing that is left is calculating the time constant and if you recall the time constant that we had to calculate for the uh, case of a capacitor was to look at the capacitor and where it's connected to and then remove the capacitor calculate the equivalent resistance that is seen from the two terminals where the capacitor is connected to and then multiply that equivalent resistance to the capacitance that would be the time constant in the case of the uh, inductor the calculation is very similar you take the inductor uh, and take basically uh, look at the two terminals where the inductor is connected to and calculate the equivalent resistance looking into those two terminals and once you, you have that take the inductance divided by the value of the equivalent resistance and that's your time constant so in this case again the time constant that we're talking about here is equal to the uh, equivalent inductance or in this case just the inductance I'm going to call it the equivalent inductance divided by the equivalent resistance seen by that um, inductor okay so let's uh, approach that this way let's say I'm trying to calculate the voltage here again and I know that since this is an RL circuit the equation for that uh, voltage is going to be in this form so let's call it something let's call it again the same way that we called it before v1t so I know for t greater than 0 v1t is equal to a y a v1 infinity plus a v1 0 minus v1 infinity times e to the minus t over tau where tau is the uh, inductance equivalent in inductance divided by equivalent resistance now in this case the equivalent inductance it's the inductance itself there's only one inductor and now we have to calculate the equivalent resistance now let's start by v infinity and v zero so v infinity we talked about it the switch at t equal to zero switch happens uh, you wait long enough everything settles down the currents are constant voltages are constant and we know that the equation for the inductor is that VL the voltage across T is equal to L D I L T D T again this is V1 on N1 and minus V2 the on the other end so if the current is settling down therefore the voltage is equal to zero and the inductor basically behaves like a piece of wire that's well it is a piece of wire it's just 
brought into a certain shape, but then that shape only is going to have an effect one when the inductance, when the current that is passing through it is changing. If it's not changing, then the voltage across it is zero. It goes back to behaving like just a piece of wire. So with that, we know that at infinity, therefore, where when the currents are settled down, the voltage across it is zero. So V1 infinity, therefore, simply is zero. So done. Uh, now V10, again, right before the switch, we did the calculation for that and we said, okay, right before the switch, and this voltage is different than that voltage, that voltage is zero, and this voltage turned out to be 15, right? At the time of the switch, this voltage gets connected to uh, the other side, so these two become the same voltage. And since the currents can't change immediately, the current through the 1 ohm is going to stay the same what it was before, uh, which we calculated to be 20 divided by 4, which was 5. So there's a drop of voltage equal to 5 volts right there, and that voltage becomes 15 and stays as, at 15. So V10, therefore, is equal to 15 volts. Now all that's left is to calculate tau. So how do I do that? So I put this in a box after the switch so that that resistor is gone and I calculate the equivalent resistance that I see here. So when, I, when you calculate equivalent resistance, what we said is that the first thing that you do is to make sure that all the internal uh, uh, independent sources of energy, voltages and currents, are zero. So that goes away and all that's left is just the one ohm. So the equivalent resistance in this case, or equivalent, is just simply 1 ohm. The inductance was 80 millihundred, so tau is simply 80 millihundred divided by 1 ohm. And you're done. So from all of that, you know, so I'm going to write that down. Tau is 0 0.08 divided by 1. And that actually has a unit of time. So therefore, V... 1t is equal to 0 plus v10 which is 0 uh, v10 which was 15 minus 0 so that's 15 e to the minus t over 0 0.08 and this is exactly the value the equation that we calculated last time if you remember okay so with this we really didn't do much of a, a circuit analysis and we could calculate the voltage quite uh, simply. So uh, I'm going to do the same, this time do it for the current to show you that uh, kind of practice the same process again. So let's let's say I wanted to know what the current passing through the inductor is. So ILT I'm going to call it this time. Uh, let me just clear this quickly. So that I have enough space to write it up. Hopefully, you, if you need that, those equations, you can stop the video and write them up. Now, uh, t greater than zero. Again, I know the equation for ILT is in this same format. So uh, let me write it down. So ILT is equal to IL infinity plus IL zero minus i l infinity e to the minus t over tau okay so as you can guess tau is not going to change because the equivalent in, uh, uh, inductor is still the same equivalent resistance calculated exactly the same so that tau is not going to change good so now let's start looking into i l infinity and i l zero so at infinity, again, everything is settled down. I know this is a short circuit. In other words, that's zero. And therefore, the circuit that is left is this 20 volt, that 1 ohm, and then ground. I'm going to quickly draw it here. So this is the circuit that you're dealing with. So IL, it's just the current that is passing through, is just simply 20 divided by 1, which is 20 amp. So IL infinity is 20 divided by 1, 20 amp. Now, IL0, right before the switch, the two were there, right after the switch, the current can't change. We 
set that because we know that the current is passing through the inductor and the inductor is going to limit how the current can behave because if there's a abrupt change in the current there would be an infinite voltage that can be the case and therefore the current right before the switch and right after the switch are the same now right before the switch that's a ground these two are in the circuit so that was right f and that was infinity and right before the switch this is basically your circuit so i l zero is 20 divided by 4 which is 5 amp and with that i can write the equation for the ilt so ilt is equal to il infinity which is 20 plus il zero which is 5 minus 20 e to the minus t over 0.08 Let me do a better job here. So we draw the circuit minus T point O eight. So that is twenty minus fifteen e to the minus t divided by point O eight. That concludes our calculation without doing any really circuit analysis. This is because we have done the math and we know that the solution is going to have a certain format. So it just is a shortcut. Um, hope you have uh, learned enough to be able to do circuits including inductors now. Uh, this concludes our discussion on inductors uh, RL circuits, in other words, with uh, switches or DC voltages constant, voltages or currents connected to them. Uh, next, we're going to start discussing uh, a new kind of component um, or an extension of inductance, which is called a mutual inductor, or in some, the, some cases we can extend that concept to discuss transformers. Um, thank you very much.